fellas. Welcome back. Um, I hope that you and your loved ones are safe, healthy, doing good through this pandemic crap. And uh, amidst all the madness, I've got something cool that I want to share with you guys today. And uh, this is something that all PCP air gunners that own a tube style air cylinder PCP air gun can use. So I think that a lot of guys are going to uh, appreciate this and be able to put this to use. So one of the greatest challenges, especially for a new air gunner, uh, that you can come across is finding a way to safely and securely hold on to your air cylinders uh, so that you can do maintenance, change a seal, you might want to install a regulator, or whatever the case may be. But uh, you want to be able to hold down on it securely and safely, and also in a way that's not going to scratch it or mar it or screw it up in any kind of way, right? A lot of the end caps and valves that are on air cylinders, certain manufacturers, you know, they they break loose real easy. Um, I've even seen some come loose w with nothing but a hand, which surprising enough, I, I have seen that. But uh, a lot of the manufacturers are using Loctite, and uh, they're they're on really tight. The flash platform is one in particular, and if you start searching, you can find some pretty pretty bad horror stories of guys, you know, uh, different things they tried and, and end up screwing up their air cylinder and all the, only to, uh, in the end, they still couldn't break or loose or whatever, you know, and just had to give up. But uh, anyways, I'm going to show you what I've done. And I've been rocking this for a couple of years now and it's working out really nice. So what I did is I made some uh, vice jaw inserts. And as you can see, it's just PVC pipe, half of a PVC pipe on each side couple mounting holes and it's going to go directly on top of your existing vice jaw just like that so what you need to do is you need to uh you know obviously measure your vice determine your vice jaws mine's a five inch uh, so i made each one of the inserts six inches long and my jaws were mounted with a socket head cap screw like so and that's not going to work for mounting up our inserts on top of here because we need a flathead cap screw like so so that we can recess below the plastic and not have anything but the plastic of the PVC pipe making contact with our air cylinder and uh, you know you don't want the screw protruding in any type of way because you've got to put quite a bit of pressure uh, with your vise on the cylinder and you don't want to take a chance of putting a dent or, you know, a little dimple in there or whatever. So um, what I had to do in my case, like I said, mine were mounted with a socket head cap screw. So what I did is I went to the hardware store and I got the same size, an M8, same, you know, pitch and everything on the threads, except it is a flat head cap screw. And what I did is I got one that was five millimeters longer and I just cut it down to size accordingly for what I needed. Now, if your vice jaw inserts that are on your vice already come with a, a flathead cap screw mounting in there, the only thing you've got to figure out is the fact that it's going to be sticking out. You're going to need about two sixteenths more of an inch of threads, you know, because even though it's recessed in the PVC, it's now going to be, like I said, a couple of sixteenths above. And you've just got to determine if that original factory screw is going to work or not based on the fact that if you're, you know, if you're still going to have enough threads sticking out once you've got your pipe mounted on there and everything like that. So you're going to go to the hardware store and you're going to get your screws uh, for mounting as needed, obviously, and you're going to get an inch and a half PVC pipe. Now you, you can't use inch and a quarter, you know, inch and a half. You got to use inch and a half. If you get inch and a quarter, it's going to be slightly undersized and uh, you're going to have to heat it up, resize it, add a whole nother step to the process. So inch and a half PVC pipe, it's going to work well for any air cylinder out there. I promise. So once you got your inch and a half PVC pipe and you've determined the length that you want your jaws to be, I'm going to show you a real quick, easy way to mark up the pipe to cut it in half. Uh, so that you can cut it accurately in half because you want it you want it even and accurately cut right down the middle in half so what you're going to do most of your pipes well any that i've seen ever 
they all come with this writing on the side and dictating the company that made it, uh, the size, different you know specifications and stuff like that. What you're going to do is put a mark on each side right through the center of that writing, put a straight edge on there and draw a line. So now we've got our you know line that we can go off of. And then what you're going to do is take a piece of paper, put it on the paper, take a marker, and trace around your tube. And then what you're going to do, once you have your circle on the paper and you've traced around the outside of your tube, take your ruler and find out where half is. You know, just like a crosshairs uh, in your scope. You know, you're going to measure and find out where halfway is both ways and then intersect the lines and draw them. And then that's what you're going to use to put your markings on your tube. So once you got your crosshairs, you know where halfway is, you got your circle, you're going to set the tube on there and you're going to line up this line that you already made through the red right and you're going to line it up with uh, one of the marks on the crosshair. Now that way, all you've got to do is spin around and put your mark opposite, flip your tube over, put it back on with the same existing first line and it's on the same mark and then come across and make your other mark here. Now we got a mark on both sides. We can come with our straight edge and draw that line and we're good to go. We got a line on each side, we're marked. We know exactly where we need to cut it and we're ready to cut. Now, there's probably all kinds of ways you could cut this up, but uh, one of the fastest ways I've found when uh, doing all kinds, I'm just, I really like an angle grinder, some kind of cut off tool. Uh, I've done a lot of fabrication and different things where I'm just really handy with this and it's kind of my go-to tool and I can cut really straight lines with it, you know, so what I did is I just buzzed mine, uh, like I said, with the angle grinder, able to cut through and make really straight, nice lines and uh, just cut it right up in half. So I'm not saying you've got to use an angle grinder, uh, you know, you could use various different saws and stuff like that, but that's just what I did. So once you get it cut in half and you're ready to go that way, um, what I did then is I sanded all the rough edges, rounded everything, made it real nice and smooth. You know, I don't want any roughness or jagged edges or anything like that. And uh, so I cleaned it up real good. Then the next thing you're going to do, you're going to take your insert from your vise, you know, the factory insert that comes on there that you've removed, and you're just going to place it nice and even, center it. You know, all you got to do is eyeball it, but you're just going to place it in there like that. You know, just center it and get it in there fairly even. And then take your marker, mark your two holes, and uh, you're going to do it on both your pieces. And then you've got to obviously drill your hole uh, appropriately for whatever size screw you've got going on. So once you get your two holes in there, this is the most important step. You're going to need an 82 degree countersink. And you've got to countersink these holes. You, you know, I didn't use a hand drill, but you could use a hand drill. I used the press, but uh, you could definitely get all this done with hand tools. You don't need to have a drill press or anything like that. Just a regular old drill, uh, 82 degree countersink. And you're just going to come in and countersink each of them holes. Now, you want to go slow when you're countersinking. You know, take a good chunk out and then just go a little bit at a time. So you just go a little bit with the countersink, drop your screw in there. And see, you know, if you're still sticking up some, go a little deeper. Just go little bits at a time because you want to only take off as much material as necessary to recess the screw below there. And once you're below there, you know, and you've got it, you don't even want it flush. You want it recessed. You want it below the surface of that PVC pipe because, uh, like I said, you don't want any metal or anything like that. And even though we're going to line this with leather, uh, you don't want any metal contacting, you know, it, like I said, it's a great pressure across there and on your air cylinder. And if the metal, if the screw is not recessed and you haven't countersunk deep enough, you will dimple it uh, probably. So anyways, like I said, countersink it a little bit at a time till you get right where you need to be. Uh, old fumble fingers here. Get right where you need to be so you're countersunk on both your holes. So... Let me go ahead and mount this thing up here real quick and get it on the other uh, side. I've got one of them mounted already. And then I'll show you real quick uh, what the next step is and what I do here after that point. So, like I said, let me get these on here real quick. Mm. 
and that'll probably cause me all kinds of grief here and I won't be able to thread the holes or something like I'm got half a brain. That was rough. I'm kidding. All right, so I got them mounted up. Now I'm gonna show you the next step. Now you can get this uh, leather and stuff like this at craft stores and different things. Um, I found at most of the local craft stores that they'll have you know very inexpensive uh, bulk bags of cut off scrap pieces and stuff. So that's the stuff that I grab. And uh, this stuff is about two sixteenths of an inch thick, probably, if I had to guess. Maybe uh. Yeah, probably about two sixteenths. But anyways, all you're going to do is, uh, you know, mark off and measure and cut your, uh, cut your leather to size. And we're going to, what I like to do is use just a little bit of silicone. So what I'll do is just take a dab of silicone and just run right down the middle of the plastic. Not much, just a dab. Just a little bit in there to help hold on to that leather. And the reason I use a silicone like this, just regular old silicone like you would use uh, around a shower or anything, you know, bathroom silicone. But uh, the reason I use this is because you can peel the leather right off. You know, if you, if you want to drop these off of here and you need to use your vise for some other purpose, you can just peel the leather right off. It's not permanent like a glue or something else might be. And you can just roll with your fingers and take it all right off of the uh, insert that you made and everything. So that's why I use uh, the silicone. So let me get these in here real quick. Also, rather than, uh, you know, using a double-sided tape or some other removable form, it takes uh, a minute you know, for the silicone to stiffen up and stuff. So it gives you a little bit of time to move them around, slide them around and position them right where you want them inside there. All right, there we go. And that's it, that's all you're gonna do. Now, we have a really nice way, like I said, whether you're doing a reg install, or you just need to change a seal, whatever you got going on. Now we got a really nice way to put a super even nice pressure all the way around the tube and secure down on it tightly. We don't have to scratch it or mar it or screw it up in any kind of way and uh, Simple enough, right? So like I said, anybody can make this and uh, I think many people will be able to put this to use. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope, like I said, you and your family are doing good through these times and uh, staying healthy and uh, we'll see you on the next one. So to my brothers and to all the guys out there, man, you guys that that uh, chime in in the comments and whatnot, man, that means a lot to me, you know. You guys are my brothers and uh, I enjoy talking with you and uh, the camaraderie, the conversation. I love helping guys out and uh, you know, I try to try to answer as quick as I can. So anyways, to my brothers, I salute you and uh, we'll see you on the next one.